Hello everyone, my name is Akshay Palande and I will be you know, teaching you economics. In this session, I will be talking about the other developmental organization or the financial organizations, you can say, not development. Financial organizations of the world. Okay. Starting with Asian Development Bank. Okay. Asian Development Bank was formed in 1966. Its headquarters is in Malina, uh, in Indonesia. Okay. So, what is Asian Development Bank? It runs on the lines of the World Bank. Okay. It provides to the you know, governments, private sector, non-governmental organizations, developmental agencies, community-based organizations, you know, finance to these organizations in the Asian countries, okay. like India, Myanmar, China, these are the Asian countries. Okay. So Asian Development Bank has around 67 partners, okay. 67 members. India is a part of Asian Development Bank as well. And the Indian project of uh, joining the northeast with Myanmar through the Kalandal Highway is uh, being financed by the Asian Development Bank. Okay. So now coming to Financial Action Task Force. What is FATF? Financial Action Task Force is an organization that was created in 2010. Its main motive is to fire, formulate policies and you know monitor systems. Why? To check uh, you know smuggling, to check not smuggling, you can say, to check uh, you know funding of terrorism, to check illegal activities in the financial markets of the world. Okay. So when in 2010 it was formed, India became a part of it. At that time, it also tries to check money laundering that is going on in the financial system. What basically happens is if there is a market A, terrorists will invest in market A and the profit that they get from this market will be used by the terrorists to fund their own projects. That is buying, maybe buying weapons, maybe you know, uh, buying weapons or maybe other terrorist activities that they do. They need funds for that and they fund it through these, through the financial markets. Okay. To curb this, to curb money laundering, you know, FTAF was formed. Okay. And currently in India, the QFIs that are investing, that is individual investors from abroad that are investing in India, have to be from countries who are a part of FTAF. That is the importance of FTAF. That is Financial Action Task Force. Because so that we know that not everyone, as in, so we know that terrorists are not funding or maybe money laundering is not taking place. So that is what, how it is. So now moving on, I uh, will be explaining you a new, this thing, organization or maybe a new group that has gained a lot of importance in the recent years. The group is G20. Over a period of time, in 1999 for the first time, the developing and the developed economy, I mean the developed and the developing economy, the developed were the United States of America, most of the Western European economies, and the newly developing economies or emerging economies like India, China, Brazil, South Africa, Russia, Argentina, these economies were together, came together and formed this group called as the G20. Now why does the G20 have such importance? Because 90% of the global gross national product is by these countries. 80% of the global trade is also dominated by these countries. And around two thirds of the world population reside in these countries. Okay. So which are the countries that are part of this thing? G20 are. From South America there is uh, Argentina, there is uh, this thing, Brazil, from right, this thing, North America, there is Canada, there is Mexico, there is USA, from Central America, there is Mexico, moving on to Europe, Europe, there is France, there is Germany, there is England, there is Italy, okay, moving on to uh, Russia, then there is in Central Asia, there is Saudi Arabia. Then there is India, there is China, there is Southeast Asian economies, there is uh, Australia and 
EU is also part of it. As EU as is as a particular person, you know, entity is also part of it. Okay, as an organization. Okay. So this is G20 and who are there in G20? Basically the finance ministers and the governors of these countries are part of this organization. They meet once every year and they formulate policies or discuss policies accordingly, you know, accordingly they help shape each other's policies. I'll give you an example of how G20 works. Currently the United States of America wanted to bring about quantitative easing. Now what is quantitative easing is United States of America decided not to buy its own bonds through its federal treasuries, as in not to buy the bonds of the uh, financial institutions, private financial institutions or private banks through uh, this thing. Okay. So they did not, they planned to not buy those bonds. So naturally their interest rate would increase. Okay. Naturally they decided to also not give out loans at a cheaper interest rate. That is they practically gave out interest rates for of 0%. Now they decided to charge around 2% interest. So suddenly the world over market started fluctuating because the institution that is financial institutional investors thought it was lucrative now to invest in the United States economy. So they started going to the United States economy and it had an impact on the financial markets of developing countries like India, China, Russia, South Africa. So in G20, these developing countries decided to confront the United States and tell them to be much more responsible towards quantitative easing because they were impacting the markets of the world. Okay. And taking that into consideration, United States of America decided to postpone their plan of quantitative easing or fiscal defense. Okay. So this is how in an integrated market of the world, the developing economies which are growing in their share of GDPs across in the global GDP are trying to persuade or trying to pressurize the developed countries to act responsibly or to act maturely. Okay. So this is G, uh, G20 and I am sure you will come across a lot of talks about G20 summits. So please do keep in touch with what is happening in G20 when you are studying for UPSC because there will be questions based on G20 you know in your exams so that's about it these were some of the institutions that I wanted to talk about I'm, sh I'm sure you must have understood and I hope you must have understood and if you haven't understood please contact me on 922-184-9650 okay. thanks a lot for hearing me out and all the best for your exam